Hey, it's Ken from My Math Assistant, and I just wanted to give you a quick introduction into how My Math Assistant works and how it can hopefully help your family. Okay, so after setting up your free trial, the first thing you're going to do is add your first student. So click this little blue button here, Add Students, and you'll see a little window pop up that will allow you to type in your student's information. So I'm going to call my student Sample Kid, and then the username I'm going to pick is Sample Kid. This username has to be unique throughout the system. So give them something that they'll remember that they can use to log into my math assistant with. And this will be their username and then their password. So I'm going to go ahead and create a password for my sample students. And then you're going to select which book they're in. So there's a whole list of Saxon books here. And you'll look through and pick the one that you have. So let's say you had Math 87 Homeschool Edition. Select that book. It'll show you a little preview of what the book looks like just so you can make sure you have the right book. Then you can pick the starting assignment. This would only be useful if your student is already started in the book. Say, let's say they're on lesson 20. You can go ahead and start them on lesson 20. Of course, they can go to whatever lesson they need to work on at any time. You can also select the question options here. They can be changed later, but this allows you to, for the mixed practice part of a lesson, give them only the odds or the evens or alternating odds and evens, or just have them do all the questions. So for now, I'm going to add my students. And you can see my first student pops up here on the screen. So there's a lot of buttons here. One, you can log in directly with your student account right here by clicking log in. What this will do is it'll log you out and log the students or set you up to log in with the student's password into their account. You can edit the student at any time. This will allow you to change their name or to reset their password. So if they lose their password, this is how you'll reset it. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. You can also add a new book. So let's say they finish Math 8-7, they're ready to move on to the next book. This is where you'll add the next book to their account. And then we'll look at the reports and settings here in just a minute. But for now, what I'm going to do is show you what the student account looks like. So I'm going to click Login. You can see it logs me out of my teacher account, puts their username in the uh, first field here. Now I'm going to type in their password and log in with their account. When their account first loads up, you can see that it takes me straight to Lesson 20, which is the lesson I picked as their first lesson. And you can see a bunch of tabs here across the screen. So if there are videos for this lesson, then the videos will pop up on its own on a separate tab and they can watch the teaching video for that lesson. There's also fax practice that you can turn off if you don't want to do it online, but this allows it to be an automatic part of their routine. I've found it really helpful with my own kids to go ahead and set the fax practice up to where they do it as part of their online grading. And so this actually, uh, this fax practice is not, it's based on the Saxon books, but it doesn't come from the actual worksheets. So you can see fractions to reduce. This is going to be completely randomized. So every time they do fax practice, they'll get a new set of questions. And in this case, it looks like they're going to have 40 questions and we're going to be redu practicing reducing fractions. So let's practice one real quick. Two eighths reduces down to one fourth. So they would type in one and then slash for the fraction bar and four. And then they can either click the check answer, answer button or it's faster often to just hit the enter key on your keyboard. So you hit enter, you can see I got it right. So it says I have one correct. The green bar is correct. If I get one wrong, let's say I type in one fifth for the next one. And you can see the bar changes to show them how many they have, they have right and how many they have wrong. It also tells them what the answer was. This is only on the facts practice because the idea is, of course, they're supposed to learn what they got wrong. So the next time they can practice it and get it right. So let's move on from facts practice. You can see there are three other tabs here. One is for the warm up section of the lesson, one for the lesson practice, and then one for the mixed practice. The mixed practice, again, is where you might set uh, odds only, evens only, or all questions, however you like to do it. Um, and it'll show every question on here. They can skip around and answer the questions in any order. But of course, the best thing would be for them to start from the beginning and do them in order. So what I have my kids do is I have them still do their lesson on paper with pencil. I want them to work out the problems. And then they take their paper to the computer and they start typing in the answers. Now, I've tried to make this as simple and easy as possible for your students. So for example, let's say the first answer was 10 tenets. It's probably not 10, but I'm gonna type in 10. Again, I can hit check answer or hit the enter key on my keyboard. And if it's right, it'll turn green. If it's wrong, it'll turn red. So if it's wrong, it'll say your answer is incorrect. It'll also tell them, please try again or see lesson 13 for help with this question. So this, this practice question actually comes from the concepts taught in lesson 13. So they can actually click this right here to watch a video from lesson 13 that will probably have an example question that's similar to the one that they just missed. So they can review the concepts there or they can go back in their book and look there. There's probably also some example questions there that are similar to the question they just missed. So they work through their problems. They get them green or red. The goal is for them to turn every question green or orange. 
So for my kids, I have them try at least twice on each question if they miss one. If they can't get it, they click the I need help button. It turns it orange and I just tell them just move on and continue with your lesson and we'll work on that one later. So when they finish typing in all their answers, everything is either green or orange on all three of the main sections here and the fact practice is done. Then the lesson will at least uh, initially complete and send you an email telling you the results of their work. Um, when they come back and actually finish entering all the answers that they clicked I need help on and they get them all right, then you'll get another email saying that they've fully completed their lesson. Here's their score. Here are all the, the questions that they, they missed the first time um, and lots of data for you to analyze. And really for me, the most useful thing is just to know that they actually finished their lesson without having to ask them. Now keep in mind in the settings I'm going to show you here in just a minute, you can actually turn off any of these tabs if you don't want them to do the warm up or you don't want them to do the, to do the facts practice. Or let's say, you know, some of the facts practice in Saxon has like 100 questions and that maybe that's just too much for your kid. You can actually set a limit on the maximum number of questions they get for the facts practice every lesson. Um, you can actually also customize which facts practice they see on each lesson or even turn them off for some lessons to give them a break. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. One more quick thing I want to show you is on some questions, like when there's a fraction expected as the answer, it'll actually show them a little hint box down here to tell them how to input the fraction. So again, I've tried to make it as easy as possible for them to grade their math. Um, they simply put that little forward slash there and, and the system reads that as, as the fraction bar. Okay, let's log out of the student account and I'm gonna take you back to the parent account to show you around just a bit more there. Okay, so here we are back at the parent account and what I wanna show you here is the reports and the settings. So I'm gonna start with the, the settings and you can see there are four tabs across here for settings. The first one is the question options. Let me scroll down just a bit. So this is where you can change the mixed practice to alternating odds or evens or evens only, or just back to all questions if you want them to do all the, the review questions. You can also skip the various parts of each lesson, whether it be warm up or lesson practice. And keep in mind that these settings apply to every lesson that your student is, is doing. Um, they don't apply to previous lessons that they've already finished, but they do apply to any lesson that they're currently still working on. You can also skip the facts practice, or like I said before, set a maximum number of questions um, that they see on the facts practice. So if, like I said, if 100 is too much, set it to 50 maybe. You can also track the time on the facts practice if you want to. Some students find that really stressful um, and some students enjoy trying to beat their time. So that's one thing you can turn on or off if you want. The last thing on this page is custom questions. If you like to, to assign a custom set of questions on each lesson to your student, you can actually check this box here. And what it does is it, is it gives your student a green button on their grading page that allows them to mark their own lesson complete after they've finished uh, whatever questions you've assigned to them. So the email that you get and the, um, the reports that I'll show you in just a second will allow you to verify that they actually did all the questions that you assigned to them in this scenario. Now let's take a quick look at the scoring options. You can see there are six different settings on this screen. This allows you to give your students a certain number of attempts on each question. So um, the overall lesson number of attempts is the first one. There's a different setting for multiple choice questions because obviously you don't want them just guessing until they run out of, uh, of options to try. And then for um, corrected questions, if they get one wrong initially and then they correct it, on a lesson, do you want them to get no credit for that, half credit, or full credit? And then you have the same set of options for tests. So you can set the number of allowed attempts, attempts on multiple choice questions, as well as how much credit they get for correcting their missed questions. So these are the defaults. Everyone does it differently. Sometimes for my kids, I'll let them have infinite retries on lessons because I consider that to be more practice, um, but only two attempts on multiple choice and full credit. And then for tests, I'll give them two attempts and give them half credit for uh, fixing a missed question. But on multiple choice, I only give them one attempt. So that, that's just my personal way of doing it. The assignments tab allows you to add or remove assignments from your uh, student's dashboard. Right now, this isn't that useful because your student can jump to whatever assignment they need to. But I am looking at adding some options in the future where this might actually become more useful again. The last tab is facts practice. So here's where you can completely customize which math facts your child practices on each lesson. So you can see the lessons listed down to the left. These are the defaults from the Saxon book. And you can actually pick from other books if you want to. I even have some custom facts practice like uh, multiplication facts up to 15, for example. Um, but if you just leave the defaults in, they'll practice through the math facts just like the book uh, wants them to. Um, what, I've, what I've found is occasionally, you know, if my child has practiced the multiplication facts and they're getting 99% on every single one, occasionally I'll take one off just to give them a break. 
or maybe I'll find one that they're not quite as strong at and um, have them practice that a little bit more, for example. Okay, let's take a quick look at reports now. So I go back to the dashboard and click reports, and you can see the first tab is all results. So initially this screen will only show you the work that they've started in the last two weeks. If you want to see something past that, then you click this button and it'll, it'll, that button will go away and it'll show you everything. Of course, I just created this account, so there's just the one lesson on here. But what I can do is I can actually drill into this lesson by clicking the lesson number. That'll take me to details about that lesson. So now I can see any questions that they selected needs help on or that are incorrect. Every question that they answered will be listed down here. I can either mark these questions as correct or incorrect, or I can even reset the question if I want them to completely try again um, from scratch. If I go back to the main lesson list, I can see things like their score, their facts practice score will be here, what date they started the lesson. Uh, if I want to just mark everything correct on this lesson, I can mark all correct. And I can also completely reset the lesson if I just want them to completely start again, um, as well as manually setting the score. If for some reason I don't like the way the score was calculated, maybe I feel like they should have gotten credit for a few more, or I want to give them credit for a few more, and I can actually just manually adjust the score there. There are also a few printable reports whenever you see some of these orange buttons that'll open up a new window with a, a little bit more printer-friendly report um, for some of their uh, results and their, their data. You can also see their facts practice data here. I don't have any uh, to show you, but there will be some nice little green and red bars here that show you how they've scored cumulatively um, over all the different kinds of facts practice. So all of their multiplication facts, for example, will all be lumped together on this screen so you can see like, hey, overall, my child is getting 85%, let's say, on the, on the multiplication and 75% on the addition. So maybe they should practice addition more, that kind of thing. The action items shows you the questions that you need to do something about. So this is going to be um, things that they've marked needs help, that they need help on. Occasionally there are some questions that the system can't grade that are too complex for the system to grade. So you'll need to be able to mark those as correct or incorrect here on this screen. The test results is just a page to quickly show you only the test scores as well as to be able to edit the test score and reset a test so that your student can try again. The Concept Mastery Report is a very interesting report based on the uh, data that I, that I get from the Saxon books and the data in the system based on how your student has performed. I can actually tell you, hey, here are some lessons, some concepts that your student might be weak at. So for example, I've only answered one question with this student so far, so you can see that question was from lesson 13. They got it correct zero times out of one. So they have a 0% on questions that come from lesson 13. Now, so what I do with my kids is, let's say I, I change the slider. I only want to see concepts where they've scored maybe less than 50% on their first try. I can look at this report and I say, wow, on lesson, say 34, my child, whenever they're reviewing you know, problems from that lesson, they get less than 50% of them right the first time. Let's go back to that lesson, sit down with them, go back to that lesson, just review the concepts, make sure they've got them down, and then hopefully their, their understanding improves and hopefully that number will, will go up over time. So this is just a really good, kind of simple way to gauge what uh, areas of weakness your child might have with their math understanding. Okay, I know that was a lot to go through. Um, obviously, if you have questions at any time, please feel free to go to the help page and ask us some questions or look around on there. Um, but I hope my math assistant can serve your family well and improve not only the logistics and flow of the math in your family, but also improve your, your kids' understanding of math, their joy in math, and um, hopefully they'll be successful as they move forward. All right, thanks.